Fiancé demands I choose his family over mine. Throw away as my work friends are on my main and they don't know this is going on. Also, obligatory that this is on mobile so spelling and grammar will be poo. This is a long one, but I'll try and keep it as short as possible. I, 28F got engaged to my partner of 7 years R, 29 meters in May. Both sides of our family were really happy about this and we had a big family meal 2 weeks after getting engaged. His brother lives 250 miles away and couldn't get here for that meal so we decided to have a meal just for his family in late June when his brother would be back for the weekend. This weekend was arranged long before we got engaged so he wasn't back just for the meal. Earlier this year my sister K32F got a serious eye infection that very quickly turned into an ulcer, which scarred her cornea and left it at a high risk of a perforation. She needed a corneal graft, but her surgeon was away for 4 weeks so she was going to have to wait until he got back to have it. However, her eye didn't hold and it perforated the day I was supposed to be going to the family meal with R's brother. K's wife was at work and had her phone turned off and our mom was away with our stepdad. So when K called me to let me know what was happening I knew she would be at the hospital on her own. I immediately talked to my boss and he let me go early so K wasn't on her own. I text R to let him know what was going on and he texts me back to send K his love and to remind me about the meal that night. I ignored the comment about the meal as it was the last thing on my mind. Once I got to the hospital, I was taken back into a room where K was, to be greeted by three doctors and two nurses rushing around trying to help K. I was then informed that she needed to have an emergency operation to have her eye glued or else she would lose it. The problem was that they didn't have a surgeon at that hospital that could do it and she needed to go to another hospital an hour and a half away. They asked if she would need transportation or if I could take her. I said I would take her. Once we got to the other hospital we were told that she would be having the operation at 5.30 p.m. I knew then that I wouldn't make the dinner and text her to let him know. He flipped out and basically told me to leave Kay at the hospital and have her wife pick her up after the op was done. At this point I still hadn't be able to get a hold of Kay's wife. I told him that wasn't going to happen and that he was out of order to even ask me to do that. I then text his mom and told her what was going on. She was really supportive and told me to stay with Kay and let her know how the op goes. A dinner can be rescheduled, Kay's health can't. I also spoke with his brother who was equally as understanding. I stayed with Kay, her operation was a success and I got her back home about 9pm. Her wife had ordered some Chinese and offered me some, which I happily accepted as I hadn't eaten since lunch. With that I didn't get home till about 11pm and Zar was already asleep. I was very short with me for days after and we had needed up having a huge fight where he told me that I should have put his brother and family before Kay. He said he was embarrassed going to the meal without me. I responded that I was embarrassed he though I would put a meal before my sister's health. This led to another week of awkwardness between us before we finally sat down and we sorted it out, or so I thought. Eight weeks ago Kay got her graft and so far everything is going really well with it. On Saturday his brother was here so we went out for dinner with his family. His family were all asking about how Kay was doing and I showed them a picture of the stitches in her eye. I thought that everything had gone really well until we got home and he got really angry saying that I shouldn't have brought up Kay's health issues and I shouldn't have shown them the picture. I argued that they'd asked about her and asked to see the picture. It ended with him telling me that I needed to put him and his family before K or else we weren't going to work. His family will come before mine once we are married so I should get used to it. I went upstairs and packed a bag. I'm now at my mom's house and he's been bombarding me with text and calls since I left. I do love him, but I will never put his family above my own family's health. I feel like he's expecting me to spend every holiday with his family and put their wants above my family's needs, which won't happen. I'm very close to my sister and my mom, that's not going to change. So I don't really know how to move forward or if I even want to has anyone experienced anything like this before? If so, how did you deal with it? TLDR, my fiancé got mad that I missed a dinner with his family because my sister needed emergency surgery and I was the only one available to take her. He is now insisting that I put his family before my own. I don't know how to move forward with him. Edit, for some reason it won't let me do a full update post even on my own page so I'm just going to add it to here. Thank you so much for everyone that commented. I replied to as many as I could but I read all of them. Warning, this is going to be longer than the original post. A lot has happened. TLDR, for those that just want a quick update, I left him and he's out of my house. His mom is seriously pissed at him and his brother has gone no contact with him for the foreseeable future. For those that want a longer version, once I'd decided to end things with him, I knew that the main issue would be getting him out of my house. I own the house outright, my grandma died 5 years ago and left her house to my mom, who sold it and split the money between me and my sister. I then bought my house with that money about a year after she died. I got in touch with my stepdad's friend, who is a landlord the day after I wrote my original post, who then put me in touch with his solicitor. He didn't have time to see me in person that day, but we did have a phone call where he gave me my options. In the UK we have something called a Section 8 notice. This is a 14-day eviction notice and the solicitor said this would be the quickest way to get him out. However, he could try and contest it if he wanted to which would lead to court dates and could take months. I asked him to draw up the notice and date it for Friday. The next day, I'd already made the decision to end things with him after work on Friday.
Friday, so that he could have the weekend to sort through his emotions before work on Monday. On Friday morning I text R and asked him to meet with me at our local pub after work. He quickly agreed. Not only is the pub a public space, but my stepdad and a few of his work friends go in there every Friday after work for a few pints so I knew he would be there to step in if I needed him. Thank you for suggesting this Redditors. I also picked up the eviction notice on my lunch break so I was ready to give it to him. Cost 250 pounds but was worth it. When I got to the pub, I was already there and my stepdad was stood at the bar with his workmates. I sat down with R and got straight to the point. I told him that it was over, I couldn't be with someone who didn't give me any support when I was going through one of the scariest moments of my life and expected me to drop my family for his. It didn't matter what excuses he could come up with, I wasn't interested, I'd made up my mind and we were done. He stared at me in shock for what felt like an hour but was probably only a minute or so. He then started saying I couldn't be serious. We'd been together for seven years and I was throwing it all away. I could never find another guy like him. I responded to the last comment with, I don't want a guy like you that's why I'm ending it. I need someone who's will support me when times get tough not get annoyed that the world isn't bowing down to what he wants. I then handed him an envelope with the eviction notice in and my engagement ring. I told him I was giving him a few weeks to find a place and be out of my house. Then I stood up and walked over to my stepdad, who had bought me a much needed drink and stayed with him until my ex left still looking in shock. I knew he wouldn't approach me whilst I was with my stepdad as he has always been a little scared of him. This is obviously a very condensed version of what happened. Once I got back to my mum's house, I had a one single text from him saying he wasn't moving out and was going to contest the eviction until I'd come to my senses and got back with him. We are not over, was how he ended the text. I just turned my phone off and decided to deal with the legal side of things on Monday. There was nothing else I could do. Saturday morning I woke up and turned my phone back on and had another text from him saying that he would move out if I paid him £10,000 as that's what he'd paid towards bills whilst he had lived at the house. He paid for half the electric, gas, Wi-Fi and Sky package. Note, the Sky package is only as expensive as it is because he has to have every sports channel known to man, so his half literally just paid for the sports channels. I'd already asked the solicitor about this though and he'd assured me that I didn't owe him any money as he hadn't contributed to a mortgage or any renovations of the house, it was just general expenses. He also knew that I don't have £10,000 just lying around. Let's say I was irritated by this and decided to ring his mum to see if she could talk some sense into him. I'll call his mum s to make it easier. She was appalled by what I told her and said she would speak to him. She called me back about an hour later and asked me to meet her at the house. I was on an away day to watch his football team play and wouldn't be back till about 10pm so I knew he wasn't there. I met her at the house with K, and S said that R's brother was on his way back home and they would have her out by the following afternoon. She hadn't even spoken to R, just his brother but she promised he would be out. S then asked me to walk her through the house showing her exactly what was his and what wasn't so he didn't take anything that didn't belong to him. The next morning, I got a text from her calling me all the names under the sun for getting his mom and brother involved. I blocked him and a couple of hours later S texted me to let me know he was out and staying with her. I thanked her and she told me that she would like to stay in contact and I happily agreed to this. I went back to my house after work on Monday, changed the alarm code and my stepdad changed all the locks for me. My stepdad is also arranging for a friend of his to install cameras around on the outside of the house. This will be done over the weekend. S rang me on Tuesday asking if we could meet up as she had some things she wanted me to know. So we met for lunch that day. It was at this time that she told me her ex was a controlling a whole who was incredibly selfish and the selfishness was what she had seen in R for so long. That's why she had commented on him being like his father, but she had hoped that was the extent of R's attitude and he hadn't picked up his dad's controlling behavior, which to be fair, he hadn't up until this whole episode. She had left R's dad after he had punched R's brother in the face when he was 14 and R was 10. He had never laid a hand on her her or their sons before, but one time was enough and she left with the boys. To her knowledge her ex had never reached out to speak to R or his brother and they hadn't spoken to their father in years. I didn't know any of this. All I had been told was that their dad wasn't in the picture and hadn't been for a long time, but S had thought I knew and that's why she hadn't told me before. However she had found out on Sunday night that R was back in contact with his father and had been for the past year. His dad had been putting lots of thoughts into R's head about how he is the man of the house and his family is all that matters. This had fed into R's selfish tendencies and it amplified them tenfold. S said that she had told him to find somewhere else to stay ASAP as she couldn't even look him in the face. Then R and his brother had a huge argument that ended with his brother telling him that as long as R is in touch with their dad, then he will have zero contact with him. Even going so far as to tell him to spend Christmas with their dad because S is going to his house and R isn't welcome. When S took R's brother's side in all this, R flew into a rage and said he 
would move in with his dad. He then left the house, but came back a couple of hours later looking like he'd been crying. Turns out, that his dad doesn't want him living with him and basically said he could be on the streets for all he cares. He's not putting a roof over a grown man's head. S thinks that R is now starting to realize everything he has lost due to him listening to his dad and has seen his dad's true colors. S is incredibly disappointed in him, but he's her son so she is trying to be there for him as best as she can. However she still wants him out as she doesn't trust him anymore. His brother still won't have anything to do with him. She has also told him to stay the hell away from me as I don't need to be brought into this and he has promised her that he will. Only time will tell if that's true, but I do have him blocked on everything and if he turns up to the house I will just call the police to get rid of him. The more S told me about what had been going okay behind my back, the more resolute I have become about wanting nothing to do with him. I never want to see him again, if I can help it. So all in all R's life is a shit show, but as long as he stays away from me then I don't care. I've been spending a lot of time with my sister and her wife as well and my mom and stepdad which has been great. I've never really been close to my stepdad, but this has brought us a lot closer together which has been one huge positive out of all this. I'm not exactly happy right now, but I'll get there. There's still a lot of feelings that I need to unpack and it will take time to move on from this whole situation. I don't think I will be dating for a while. I need to really get over all this and don't want to dump this on anyone else right now. For all those asking how Kay is doing, she's doing great. Had a hospital appointment on Monday and her consultant said her eye is healing in his words, marvelously, so that's a relief. Thank you to everyone that reached out to me. I hope there won't be any need to update this again, so this should be my final update. Update, last I heard was that his mom was kicking him out as she would not have anyone in her house that was in contact with her ex and that he had tried to go live with his dad, but his dad had refused. I was completely NC with him, so his mom was the one that had told me this. I'll call my ex R and ex's mom ass to make things easier. I hadn't heard from R in weeks, but yesterday he showed up at my house. I had the chain on my door so open it with that still attached. No way would I let him in. He basically told me that he had nowhere to live. His mom isn't speaking to him and his dad won't put a roof over a grown man's head. His words not mine. He asked if I would take him back or at least let him live with me. No way in hell would I get back with him and getting him out the first time only went easy because his mom stepped in to help. He had threatened to take me to court knowing that if he did it could take months to get him out and then said he would only move if I gave him 10,000 pounds. I contacted his mom, who was furious about that and she turned up with his brother and forced him out. I told him that there was zero possibility of him ever living with me again and that we were 100% over. He started shouting at me and calling me all sorts of names, so I threatened to call the police if he didn't leave and shut the door. I have cameras all over my house so I caught everything he did and said on camera and have saved it to a USB just in case. He then went crying to all our mutual friends and it managed to get back to his mom. She called me and asked what happened. I told her and she then informed me that she had put her house up for sale and was moving 300 miles away to be nearer her other son. Her and R had a huge argument about this and she finally kicked him out. Since then he's been couch surfing but with Christmas coming up, his friends aren't really happy with having him on their couches when they have kids and are meant to be enjoying the festive season. He's been kicked out of three friends' houses in 10 days. She told me I was right to refuse him, but I've since had other friends say that they feel sorry for them, and that I can just let him stay in my spare room until he's back on his feet. I then asked them to put him up, but they said they would but don't have room and if they had a spare room like me then they would let him stay. My family and his are on my side, but I'm starting to doubt myself with what a couple of my friends have said. Edit, just a quick edit as I'm going to bed. I've just spoken with the wife of one of R's friends and she's asked to meet me on my lunch break tomorrow. Apparently, R stayed with them for two nights before she kicked him out and there's more going on than what I know of. She's going to tell me the full story tomorrow, but told me that I shouldn't let him anywhere near me and that he's staying in a B&B so he does at least have a roof over his head right now. I'll try and update after I've spoken to her. Update 2. So I posted yesterday about my ex turning up at my house wanting for me to let him move back in with me. I said no, but a couple of friends thought I should let him and that messed with my head. R is my ex. A few people told me to change my lock etc. I did that and changed my alarm code as well as my stepdad got his friend to put up four cameras around my house. I'm also going to start shutting the gate so that no one can walk up to the house without ringing the bell there first. I put in an edit that I was going to be meeting with one of ours friend's wives for lunch today and I have to say that it was informative for sure. I'll call her N, 30F and her husband Z, 29 meters. So I went to meet her on my lunch break at a cafe near my work. It's a place that a lot of my co-workers go to and I know the staff there as well. A few Redditors thought that she might bring R with her so I wanted it to be somewhere I feel comfortable and have backup if needed. Turns out that I didn't need to bother about that. When I got to the cafe Anne was there on her own. I grabbed some lunch and a drink and sat with her. We went throughout the usual small talk before she started telling me what had been going on. R rang Z on 
Thursday morning saying he had nowhere to go and could he stay with them for a few days. Z spoke to Ann and they agree he could stay in their guest room. R went to their house after work and they had a long talk where R told them he has a flat lined up, but can't move until January. Z and Ann agreed to let him live with them until January as long as he followed some basic rules and paid for his own food. The rules were things like, no bringing women back there and if he went out drinking he had to be quiet when he got back so he didn't wake their daughter who's six. He agreed to all this and paid for a Chinese for them all that night. The next day after work R went to meet his dad in the pub for a few pints. When Z and Ann went to bed R still wasn't home. They were woken up at about 2 in the morning by R arguing with a woman. Apparently, R had met this woman in a bar, took her back to Z and Ann house, got his pleasure and then told her to get dressed and fuck off once he was done. She had gotten angry, which started an argument where I was saying some horrific shit to her. Anne took the woman downstairs and got her a taxi. Whilst Z stayed upstairs arguing with her once Anne had got rid of the woman she went back upstairs and tried to calm Z and her down. At this point R decided to take out his frustrations on Anne, calling her a bitch and telling her to do something useful and make him a sandwich before bursting out laughing like he'd made the funniest joke ever. This made Z lost it and pinned R to the wall by his throat. Side note, R isn't a fighter at all whereas Z was an amateur boxer in his youth and can handle himself well. and managed to get Z to let him go and R was shoved in the guest room and told to sleep off the alcohol. It's a miracle that Anne's daughter didn't wake up during this. The next morning Anne got their daughter ready and went to her mum's after telling Z to get her out of their house. Z agreed and after Anne left he woke R up and told him to pack his shit and leave. R tried to apologize and beg to stay but Z was having none of it and kicked him out. Going off the timing, I think he left there and came straight to my house. On Sunday Z text R to meet up so that they could speak and they met up in a pub. Z has been friends with R since they were 11 and has never seen him act like he has been doing so he wanted to find out what was really going on. He managed to finally get the truth out of R basically. R has been in contact with his dad for a lot longer than he told us. By this point it's over two years. His dad is a raging misogynist that believes a woman's place is in the kitchen and bedroom. A man's place is to rule the house and be waited on hand a foot as well as deciding who can and can't be in their lives. He's been dripping this poison into R's ear and it's really taken a hold of him. Z told N that he just doesn't recognize R anymore. R wants to start living his life the way his father has told him he should. When Z pointed out that R's dad is 62, living in a shitty one-bedroom flat, not had a real relationship since R's mom left him, has no friends, his family doesn't speak to him and that he's the type of guy that when he walks into a pub people finish their pints so they can leave and get away from him. R was furious. He told Z that his dad is just misunderstood. Z responded that people understood his dad and that's why they stayed away from him. He's toxic. This pretty much ended their conversation and R left. Z did find out that R does have a flat lined up for January, so that was true and that he's found a B&B he can stay until the flat is ready at a minimal cost. Z and N have also decided to go NC with R as they don't need that toxicity around them, but especially not around their daughter. A few Redditors had said it sounded like R was on drugs, so I asked N what she thought and she doesn't think so but can't be sure. She and Z think that R is just so far under his dad's thumb now that he's completely changed as a person. He believes that everything his dad says is gospel. She did let me know that R has a burner egg account that he is using to check on my egg and I immediately made my account private. He had said something about seeing me waste money on a stupid amount of Christmas presents when I couldn't even help him out to Z on Sunday. I'd been to a Christmas market on on Saturday afternoon and had posted pics on Ig. All of this just made my resolve stronger that he will not be getting anywhere near my house again. It also made me realize that I don't have any feeling for him anymore other than frustration at how he's acting and some sadness at how far he's fallen from the man I once knew. I thought that hearing he had another woman in his bed would annoy me, but there was just nothing. I couldn't have cared less. I thanked N for the info and we agreed to keep in touch. We won't be as close as we were when I was with R but it feels good to have someone who knows the entire situation and has seen R's behavior with his own eyes. There were also some some Redditors that told me to ditch the friends that had told me to let him stay with me. Unfortunately, I can't ditch them completely as they're part of the friend group and that would just cause unnecessary drama, but I will be keeping my distance from them and only talking to them when part of the group. I'm currently at my sister's and we're going to watch a Christmas film to get us in the mood to decorate all our houses this weekend, so I will be on and off for the next few hours if anyone has any questions. Thanks for the votes and giving me some perspective. Reddit isn't all bad.